Uh, this is the product analytics PM UX weekly sync for March 29th. Um, starting at, with the agenda, the review of the sticky items. Um, I don't see anything in sticky items. Um, so moving right along to looking back at last week's action items. Um, early this morning, I canceled the call for the week that we're both on PTO. I left the call for the week that you're on PTO, but I'm back um, in case there's any uh, issues that front end wants to discuss. Uh, but otherwise, it'll just okay. be async. Um, and we'll catch up when you get back with everything. I wouldn't worry about anything there. Um, and then I added to do to check in with other PMs um, about how they structured their check-ins with customers during the alpha and beta. Um, Jaime and I, who uh, is doing that on the optimized side, uh, actually meet later today. Um, so I'll, oh, cool. uh, I'll add a note uh, back to um, either the agenda or I started a issue about onboarding um, and add some information yeah. into that uh, so that we have that ready awesome. to go. Um, and long term, cool. I want to move that over into internal handbook of kind of here's how we're going to run the beta for product analytics. Um, nice. And then funnel visualization, I wanted to follow up on that. I think I made that an agenda item, but I'm just going to jump on it now um, because mm -hmm. that was not really an action item, but kind of an action item of how we're going to proceed to that. Um, and talking with Dennis about it, I think the plan that was discussed but not written down anywhere was the initial visualizations are just going to be a line chart of um, like visits or events on this page and then this page and then this page. And then the mm -hmm. full visualization that like actually looks like a funnel, um, we'll do post GA um, or leading up to GA. Uh, but the first okay. visualization for that will be a line chart, not a, or a column chart, and not rather, um, not a line chart. Um, but yeah, so that's all right. Okay. Cool. Um, and then a couple of follow ups. There was a lot of discussion about where to put the instrumentation. Um, and I started a thread Oops. about possible solutions, proposed solutions. Um, Jean had a bunch of uh, discussion there. Um, mm -hmm. It looks like you had a comment yesterday about that. Um, and it just, I wanted to make sure that we had time to sync if there's anything you wanted to discuss um, about the flow and where this is going to end up, why it's going to end up. Yeah, um, so not so much yet because I was kind of wrapping up the other issue I'm working on. So yeah, I remotely uh, followed the conversation and uh, yeah, I just dropped like a quick comment um, about, I think it was like, where should this live? Should this be a configuration somewhere in the app or something that we kind of keep locally scoped to product analytics? Uh, if I'm summarizing this well, um, I'm more leaning toward keeping it in product analytics. Um, I, yeah. I think like, that there are a lot of, you know, context switching in GitLab overall. And if we can minimize this as much as possible, I think it's probably the, our best approach. Yeah, I think to Dennis's point, uh, we don't have any other external data sources right now. Um, so configuring a data source is required for any of the other things that will show up in analytics as a whole umbrella. Um, product analytics is uh, the only one. So if we keep that scope yeah. of product analytics for now, we can move it at some point um, and make it a more generic thing of their external data sources for product analytics and X, Y, and Z, if we get there. Okay, yeah. cool. Awesome. Um, I think the the most confusing part for me of all of this is all of these are put into the same milestone, but some of them are design issues, some of them are implementation issues, but we're asking design questions about a lot of them. Um, and so I'm like, wait, yeah. why did we do this? If this other issue just undoes that later, like in the same milestone. So um, that was yeah, yeah, yeah. just my hold up mentally for that. All right. Um, oops, just gonna add a note. Can you, uh, you just make sure that the latest comment on that um, where to put instrumentation issue is for the alpha for the first user? We're going to yeah. keep it contextual to product analytics, and then we'll continue okay. to discuss with the other teams that have dashboards if they have external data sources how to configure those, and we'll make it a generic solution at that point. Got it. Right. Cool. Yeah. You. So, yeah, that's also something in terms of how do we want it, this to look. Um, like you know, to know what what's going to be the final usage of it. Um, so that's something that I've still yet to figure out because uh, I'm picking up like this is going to be my next up this issue. Um, so yeah, we'll go a bit more uh, granular. Uh, this. Yeah. yeah, I think that's been the hardest part is that we have a lot of things that could it could potentially look like 
and we're making some guesses a little bit about what else is yeah. going to be there and available. Um, I like if we can put it through the lens of what are we going to do for the first user from product analytics perspective always like that I think is going to help clarify for us and say this is how we should do it for the first user and then we'll get the feedback from that user and then we'll add more data sources to it. Um, yeah. Okay. Now I agree. That makes sense for now. Awesome. Sounds good. Um, it looks like you are wrapped up on the scorecard. Uh, yeah. Um, so I actually just finished it. Uh, I just uploaded the video to YouTube. So it's still processing, but I'm going to share this with the team probably later today when it's going to be uh, finished, when people can ac actually access it. Um, but yeah, so I basically generated like a few stuff. So the first thing was the heuristic evaluation and then an experience map. So which is kind of mapping the different steps I went through and kind of jotted down my thoughts on that. Um, yeah, the video kind of sum it up. Um, so I'm not going to uh, go into great length into this right now. Um, but yeah, I would say like the, the, my biggest grip that I had, um, and uh, sorry, for context, I evaluated two flows. The first one being setting up a dashboard and getting started with product analytics. And the second one is focused on creating a visualization with the visualization designer. And yeah, so I guess the the probably my biggest grip with uh, getting started was just like the initial onboarding steps, which are pretty good in a way. Like the, the initial empty state is pretty good, but the fact that it kind of processed, like you have a loader once you click it, and then you end up on the actual instructions. I thought it's something that we could have kind of trimmed down. Um, so there's something I'm kind of calling out, and then the other thing is when you're on a dashboard, the edit pattern is a bit um, raw, I would say, <laughs> for now, because uh, it's very different from what we have across the app. So usually when you're in an edit mode and in some kind of view, you have either a drawer or a modal, but something that comes to overlay the UI and here it's directly embedded. So like if you click edit, you're not sure you're in edit mode, but the CTA changes, and then you click on code, and then it's changing the view. Like so, I thought all this could could be uh, refined. We have an issue, and then for that. yeah, so yeah, it's so probably probably some of the things that I called out already exists, uh, and that's going to be kind of the, the second part of the scorecard is me uh, writing up recommendations. So I'll try to kind of crawl uh, GitLab and and find some of the things that already exist. Because there are also smaller things that I've noticed that are probably have an issue already. Yeah. Um, so I think we have a design issue in 1511 to add a better visual indicator to dashboard panels when you're editing them. Yeah. So that's a that's a great place to start. Yeah, for sure. Um, and yeah, and then on the visualization designer, I think it was the end of the flow where, and I guess it's probably because we haven't built the whole functionality yet, but once you picked all of the metrics and the dimensions and that you're ready to add to dashboard to your dashboard, sorry, if you add it to your dashboard, then it's just showing you the code uh, tab of the visualization. And then it's like, okay, I kind of deal with it. Uh, so I was like, wow, I thought this was going to add it to a dashboard. Or I was expecting since it's living higher up in the hierarchy that I would get prompt of like, okay, where do you want to put it now? So I guess there are two things here to unpack as the first one is do the visualization designer needs to live in such a high place as in, I would assume that people's workflow is, oh, I want to add the visualization to my dashboard. So first I'm going to go into my dashboard, then I'm going to add the visualization. Um, and then the second thing is like, yeah, the, the flow doesn't seem to be fully functional yet because if I click on that to dashboard, I would expect it to be added to a dashboard. Uh, but yeah, that's that's two of the big things that I've noticed. And then the rest is like small visual tweaks or like simple components change that we can do to better fit what exists in GitLab already. Yeah, I think um, I think the intent with visualization designer, because that's uh, Tim's initiative um, from what I understand, it is it's gonna be the visualization designer for not just product analytics, but it can be the visualization designer for um, value stream analytics or for other yeah. things where there's data coming in. And so that's why from a hierarchy perspective, it's at that higher tier, it's higher it's up, at yeah. that higher level. Um, but yeah, I think part of that natural flow is let's, <laughs> once you 
once you do it, let's at least add some context about now, what do I do with this thing? I visualized yeah. this metric. How do I get it into a dashboard? Um, so if we can do that, it makes me more comfortable with, hey, let's pull that forward in our progression. Because right now it's not planned as part of our first external user or our alpha. Um, so it, if we can get it to a point where like, hey, here's how you would start to design a panel within your dashboard through this tool mm -hmm. over here, and then kind of help those users kind of babysit them through it a little bit or handle them through it. Um, once they get it the first time, like they'll, I think they'll understand the workflow, but we can't be on a call with every single user, right? So yep. yeah, okay, awesome. Um, great, yeah, looking forward to watching the, the video walkthrough. That'll be really good. Uh, yeah, cool. <laughs> cool. Um, the only other thing I was going to mention, I'm sure you saw, there was uh, a call with the folks from Optimize that the front end team had this morning. I'm kind of talking mm -hmm. through dashboards. I haven't had a chance to get through that yet, uh, but it's probably going to be good context for both of us just to understand what front end is thinking and what they've discussed already. Um, as far as what okay. dashboards look like, where they look, where they end up, kind of what user workflows might be as they're imagined. And then we can go validate that um, as we get customers on board. Okay. All right. Awesome. Um, yeah, anything else good. I can help you with on the work in 1511 or um, what we're planning for 16.0? Mm, no, for now, that's about it. I think we're going to discuss it for 16.0. It's just like limited availability uh, on my end. Um, but now, like for 1511, I'm going to like go deeper into actual design issues. So kind of excited about that as well. Yeah. <laughs> yeah All right, great. Well, we'll give give ourselves back some time then. Cool. All right. Well, All right, thanks, Kevin. have a good rest of your day. You See too. You.